All right, Mike from Prep Pros here. I took the March 2023 SAT. I got a perfect score. So we're going to do a full walkthrough of the writing language section, walk you through my exact thought process, what I'm looking for for each of the questions. If this video helps you out, like, subscribe, turn on some notifications so you make sure you don't miss any SAT videos in the future. But let's jump straight into the first question here. Now, this question is testing us on a mix of sentence structure and punctuation based on the answer choices. For both the artists and the students of the arts, this is what we teaches an introductory phrase blank therefore focusing on the final products can be daunting no need for the therefore here at all but focusing on final products can be daunting is an independent clause if we have an introductory phrase followed by an independent clause we can always place a comma between the two of them so i'm just going to skim through this quickly when i'm doing writing in language i'm reading at a medium fast speed as i'm working through the passage itself um, this is just a word choice question. What often gets blank is the creative process. Deserted, shrugged off, left in the desk. Don't make any sense here. It has to be neglected. In the 1960s and 70s, a movement known as process art, drawing from dadism and other avant-garde art movements. This is something I'm always watching out for. I see a dash here. I see a dash here. You want to be careful you're reading the full sentence because it's really common to see this extra information. But here, when we put the dash here and we have the second dash, we can take all of this out. In the 1960s and 70s, a movement known as process art sought to rect rectify that issue by emphasizing improvisation and transcendence in art. This makes perfect sense, so we need the two dashes. All right, next up here, once again, I'll just kind of skim through this part quickly, but next up we have a transition question. So. Even though it's in this sentence, I still want to read the prior sentence carefully for context. So process artists typically choose non-traditional materials such as felt, cheesecloth, or molten lead that allowed time, chance, or gravity to easily factor into an artwork's creation. For his 1970 untitled Pink Felt, blank, Robert Morris dropped various pieces of pink felt into a pile on the floor of an art gallery. So we're talking about how they chose non-traditional materials that allowed them to do this. Now we're simply giving an example of somebody doing that. So for instance, is the only one which is one of our kind of like example transitions given here. So that's why it has to be A. All right, most effectively combines. So with no identical geometric shapes and no other discernible real world point of reference, the artwork suggested that sculpture can be soft and formless, can also be arbitrary. So there's a few set rules, um, and I'll give away a little bit of the secrets that I teach uh, that help us out with this, but D, never ever pick a which choice most effectively combines answer that has a semicolon. It's never been right on the SAT. Sorry about that there. Um, now we have to look at the other ones. So though it is soft and formless, can be soft and formless, it can also be utterly arbitrary. We're changing the meaning of the sentence and we're also making part of this extra information. Being is always a big no-no on the SAT. That lets me back my way into C is the correct answer. We're expressing the same idea as the sentence originally did as well. All right, number six, which choice most effectively supports the claim made earlier in the sentence? So Morris's choice of the floor two was key. Not a lot of context to go off of. Blank, abstract expressionist Jackson Pollock famously took the canvas off the wall and placed it on the floor. Well, we're talking about Morris's choice on the floor was key doesn't make any sense at all to introduce Jackson Pollock. So that's going to let me eliminate this answer. It symbolized process artists' interest in organic functions such as the inner workings of the human body. Don't have any evidence of that, and we haven't discussed any of this at all elsewhere in the passage. Morris also hung felt from nails on the walls to illustrate the effect of time on the artwork, not really necessarily going back to the floor. Um, it was consistent with the movement's belief that art should not be literally or figuratively held up high on a pedestal. This is the only one that makes any sense. All these other ones are introducing new information and using a little bit of the outside context of the rest of the passage. Don't work at all. Um, seven here, the ideas at the heart of the movements such as process art, blank, this is a subject verb agreement question. The ideas are, are being doesn't make any sense. So seven has to be A. Are also evident in more recent arts programs. Apostrophe question. Program is very clearly not possessing that. So goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Has to be D without even really thinking about it too much. 
So once again, I'll skim through this just a little bit quickly. So you guys aren't sitting here and watching me read too much. Okay. It's been a while since I've taken this, so I don't remember it all super well. Um, question nine, which choice most effectively sets up the information that follows in the paragraph? Well, this is just a context question. I need to read this before I can answer question nine. So I'm gonna move on to question 10, but I'll read that first sentence before the underlined portion. The student's scenes would then be presented in a final performance. Seller's only advice was, don't have an independent clause before the colon there, so we can get rid of that. We can get rid of that. This is wrong. This is a little error I need to correct in the, the test. It should say device there, um, advice, sorry, um, there. But no use for the comma there. That's an inappropriate comma between the subject and the verb. Just no commas needed at all. B is correct. So now we're looking for the context as we go back to question nine. Sellers at only vice was that one group should volunteer to begin and that other groups should follow when reminded of their own scenes. Essentially, students were encouraged to discover their own processes and outcomes through chance and improvisation. So now we get to go back to this question. The student's scenes would then be presented in a final performance once students had spent time discussing and critiquing their work. This has nothing to do with what is discussed in the rest of the paragraph. The rest of the paragraph was really just basically saying he's not giving them much structure at all. He's just saying that one group should volunteer and the others should follow. Everything else is basically left up to the student's own process and improvisation. That's why B is going to be our correct answer here. C, which would take place in the seating area while the audience sat on the stage, has nothing to do with what's discussed after and we're adding new information that we can't back up from the passage. Sellers hoped the experience would change the way students listen to music. No evidence of that as well. All right, which quotation from Morrison provides the most effective conclusion? So often with these questions, a lot of students mess this up by just doing the paragraph itself or not rereading if they didn't understand it properly. Um, while seemingly eccentric, focusing on process over product in art is making making is valuable in that it shows that the life of the creative mind actually looks like not just what a creative mind produces. Well, from what I've skimmed through and what I remember of this passage, it's all about the process. And oftentimes with these, here's a little pro tip. The title sometimes will give you a really good idea of what a writing language passage's main purpose or main idea is. But with these, don't just lean on that alone. It's something you can use if you're really, really stuck. But it was the idea of art as player therapy has nothing to do with the passage. Theater, creative writing, who needs it, not who just who likes it. Not talking about the process at all. We grade the book itself, the dance itself, the piece itself, but it's the process where the transcendent properties of art lie. This seems to be our correct answer because we've been focusing on the process. Was the university a hostile, patronizing, or fertile environment? Nothing in this passage is focusing on the basically how good a university is for a place to become an artist. That's how we can see that C is our correct answer there. If you're looking for detailed lessons to help you improve on the writing and language section, there's no better resource than my ultimate SAT course. And in the free trial, you can learn all of your sentence structure rules, get access to a full problem set with detailed explanations to all the questions, and learn some of your most important comma rules. But if you're really looking to get a great score in the writing and language section, you need to master all of the grammar skills and all of the strategies. And that's why I have 16 chapters and over 500 practice questions that will teach you everything you need to know to get a perfect score. All right, on to the second passage here. So TV commercials are getting shorter. In 2014, 61% of you, it's TV ads were 30 seconds long, whereas in the first half of 2017, so this is directing us to what part we wanna look at on this chart, first half of 2017, blank, were right and so we're talking about 30 second long ads so we want to look at the 30 second long ads this is going to be 49 percent which is also fewer than half so a is correct In the same time period the percentage of 15 second ads rode from blank to blank so from 2014 to second half of 2017 so um 15 second ads so we are looking at this part here um Coloring on this graph is not the greatest, but 15 second ads, you can kind of see they're going in order as well, goes from 29 to 36. That's why C is the correct answer there. Um, so once again, I'll skim through the other parts as I'm kind of reading through. Um, today, TV networks and YouTube are increasingly running ads that last only six seconds long. Well, 
all of these are wordiness redundancy questions. I can tell by the pattern of the answer choice here. Um, so now I just need to think about, am I being redundant or am I being excessively wordy? So are increasingly running ads that last only six seconds long? Well, last only six seconds is the exact same idea. It's just more concise. So B is gonna be our correct answer. All these other ones, just wordier way of expressing the same idea. All right, 15 here, this clearly looks to be a punctuation comma question. So once again, skim through this part really quickly. Um, going a little faster than I normally would just for the sake of the video here. Um, but yet that is not proved to be the case. Is Tara Walpert Lever, a vice president at Google says, well, whenever we see kind of two commas surrounding something, that's the best one to typically check. And if we can take it out, that tells us it's right. Is Tara Walpert Levy says, we can pull that out, works perfectly fine, C is our correct answer. So next up, looks like we just have a word choice question. So once again, let's skim through this part a little bit quickly. All right, for example, a 30 second Buick ad highlights the car's size, navigation system, and power on unpaved roads, all among the context doesn't work. This is a prepositional idiom question. All throughout doesn't make sense. You say all within the context of something. These idiom questions are things you kind of know or don't know. We're seeing another subject verb agreement question. I can spot that by the pattern and the answer choices. Starting to read and understand the answer choices makes the SAT so much easier for you. Uses a layered sh uh, story to show that the car's spaciousness, convenience, and safety, we'd have to say add because we have a plural subject here. This is our subject. You can plug in they, you would say they add, you wouldn't say has added, they had ads, they is adding, none of those make any sense. So transition question, once again. So uses a layered story to show the car's spaciousness, convenience, safety, blank add to a family's happiness, blank. So I wanna go back for a little more context here. I'm pretty sure I remember what this sentence was talking about, but the it, I wanna understand for this question. For example, a 30 second Buick ad highlights the car's size, navigation, and power on unpaved roads all throughout this context of this. We're talking about it's using a story. Blank, a six second ad shows only the ability to accelerate. Well, once we pick up the context back here, it's way easier to see that we're highlighting a contrast. We talked about this longer ad, giving all of these details in this background and this layered story. Now the shorter one only shows the ability to accelerate. That's gonna show us a contrast here. Um, so once again, skim back through this a little bit on the super quick side for the sake of the video here. Emphasizing the car's acceleration dis delivers a clear message, independent clause. It is fast, another independent clause. Now, this is wrong. It is is not an independent clause, so we can get rid of B. C is going to be our correct answer. We can use colons to join two independent clauses when the second one is giving explanation, definition, clarification for the first, and that's what we see here in C. This improper use of the comma here, and we no longer have an independent clause before the colon. If we start saying it is, we can't stop reading there. While some advertisers have blank longer ads to fit a six second wind window, the best six second ads like this one are specifically designed to be succinct. Curved, moderated, restrained, don't make sense. Abbreviate is just to shorten. So we're just saying while some advertisers have shortened longer ads to fit a six second window, then we're following on with the same idea there. All right, pronoun question here, because we see it, it versus they. A 2018 Advertising Research Foundation study found that whether blank features cars or candy, six second ads, this is what the they is referring to. So that's why it's they there. We can't say six second ads is plural, so we can't use it. You can also kind of see a little bit of a pattern that all the other answers are singular, the odd one out, you can pick. This is something which we use for subject verb agreement you struggle to get those correct the more technical way. This suggests that in a sea of ads vying for consumer attention, which choice most effectively concludes the paragraph and the passage by expressing one of the passage's main ideas? So this whole thing has been about the conciseness of a lot of these really effective ads. That's why C is our correct answer here. But if you are stuck on these questions, start with the paragraph itself and start eliminating options. So a 2018 Advertising Research Foundation study found that whether it features cars or candy, six second ads, so we're starting to kind of hint at these shorter ones, um, get more viewer concentration per second than longer commercials do. 
This suggests in a sea of ads vying for consumer attention, we've already established that shorter can do better than longer can. More studies should research makes no sense at all for this paragraph, also not in the passage as a whole. Commercial free streaming services, this has nothing to do with the passage. This is the answer that's like kind of close. Like we could say, okay, well, they have to get creative to make them shorter and make them as influential. But this is when you really start to reach. We're going beyond the scope of the passage. We're picking stuff that we think makes sense. And this is stuff that I really kind of teach students as we go through reading. So you avoid these kind of classic pitfalls. Reading really translates to these most effectively, kind of not most effectively, excuse me, which choice questions in the writing language section, because these really are just simpler reading comprehension questions. Just to be very focused on making sure you're answering the question itself. All right, passage three. For many advice seekers in the age of the internet, the act of crowdsourcing information from online communities blank. Well, this is one video I'm gonna kind of link up above where you can check out a subject verb agreement one. But for 23 here, what we're really focusing on is this is our subject. We would say the act has become, but there's a little hack. These are all plural. So you can tell B must be correct. This is all your prepositional phrase you need to get rid of. So the test doesn't trick your ear. Um, 24 or so, this is asking about context. So I'm gonna read this a little bit slower. This passage, if I remember correctly, has a lot of these context questions. Um, okay. Um, so I'm gonna read this whole thing before I answer 24. I, I have no reason to just kind of not work through the other questions as I'm going through. Okay, so yet according to the Columbia Journalism Review, advice columns have stood the test of time better than most classic newspaper staples. Blank today in major publications. What we're saying, they're, they're still there in major publications. We're not saying arriving because this wasn't like they came out of nowhere or happening or opening. We're saying like they're appearing in the publications. A little bit idiomatic, but it's also just kind of word choice here. Columns in the U.S. have followed the same basic format at least since the Dear Abby column was launched in 1956. Readers send in queries and a small number of them are published. The queries alongside a columnist published responses to them. Well, we, this is super redundant as it's currently written here. So you can get rid of this one because it has a semicolon. My bias immediately goes towards the shortest as long as it works, but readers send in queries and a small number of them are published alongside a columnist responses. We're expressing the exact same idea. We've just gotten rid of a ton of extra fluff which is otherwise repetitive, we can see the repetition here. And with C, with a columnist published responses alongside those queries, same repetition there. We already said send in queries. Ah, but before I forget 24 here, which choice provides the best transition from the previous paragraph to this one? All right. So this was really just talking about how people can post stuff online and they get these really quick and brief kind of responses. Um, then here we're kind of bringing back like these older mediums of sharing advice. Um, and we're saying they've existed for a long time. Readers send in basically their questions and then the columnist answers them. So we're not talking about downsides to the internet. Um, we're not talking about the fact that people are unwilling to take the advice or the importance of face-to-face -face communication. This is the only one that makes sense. We're saying in an online world brimming with instant advice, like you get on Reddit, well, it would be easy to write off an older medium for sharing advice is obsolete. And now we're kind of introducing that one, which isn't so instant. Um, 27 here, this is a misplaced modifier question. There's a pattern that gives these questions away pretty easily. While not as convenient as online forums, advice columns, Relevance is not what we're saying is not as convenient as online forums. It's not it. It's not the relevance. We're saying advice columns themselves are not as convenient as online forums. That's why C is our correct answer. This has nothing to do with wordiness and redundancy. That's a really common mistake that a lot of students make. This is why making sure you're knowing those patterns of the answer choices is so important because it really lets you identify what concept you're being tested on. Which choice most effectively sets up the discussion that follows in the paragraph? All right, once again, really similar to the previous one. We need to read through the rest of this carefully, but I'm gonna answer 29 as I do. The responses in the column Ask Roxanne, written by author Roxanne, Roxanne Gay, 
from the New York Times since 2017 resemble confessional essays and reply to two middle-aged readers asking if it was too late for... This is talking about two middle-aged readers, so it has to be them um, to have writing careers. Gay, the first black woman to work as a lead writer for the Marvel franchise, traced her own long-time struggle to get published. The writing world was passing me by, she admitted. Contemporary columnists' willingness to reveal information about themselves may help account for advice columns' persistence as a form. This definitely seems like this could be the right answer because we're talking about how she's kind of like sharing some of her own personal experiences to readers. So we'll start looking at the other one. Like advice columnists who use pseudonyms, this is like fake names. We don't see any mention of that at all. The 21st century has seen a proliferation of themed advice columns such as ones we're not talking about a bunch of these. We're talking about one specific one. Advice columns must often adhere to strict word limits, nothing about word limits. So ha A has to be our correct answer there. All right, 30 here. So punctuation question, rather than give advice about how to have a writing career, information that could have been gleaned from a Google search, Gay went on to impart a lesson learned from experience. Keep writing for youth is not a prerequisite for artistic success. So this is gonna be D, we are, giving an explanation, definition, clarification of what that lesson learned from experience is. So we need to use the colon there. Keep writing for youth is not a prerequisite for artistic expense. We're explaining what that lesson was. 31, which choice provides a detail that is most relevant to the previous sentence? So similar question, but we've got really small piece of context that we have to deal with here. Audiences for self-relevatory columns are often large, as evidenced by the popularity of columns such as Cheryl Strayed's Dear Sugar. The column was authored anonymously. This has nothing to do with that prior sentence, and we don't say that it was authored anonymously. Had much in common with Strayed's other nonfiction. That has nothing to do with the fact that her audience is large, um, was largely read by aspiring writers. This is your trap answer. Large, we see large, we're like, ooh, that should be right. This does not necessarily say that this is large. This is also introducing specific information which, which we cannot defend from the sentence there. This is the only one that we 100% can defend is giving a detail that's relevant to what we see. You have to be really, really nitpicky with these questions. All right, another apostrophe question. Cultural critics have widely praised Strayed's approach of narrating personal stories and meticulously analyzing readers' letters. So with these, I always start by eliminating easy ones. Letters are not showing possession of two, so I get rid of both of those. Now, this is the thing the SAT loves, singular versus plural possession. Plural readers, plural letters. This would be like saying one reader's letters, but we know we're talking about not one single reader, but we're talking about readers is a large group. That's why it has to be A here. Now this question, I remember from the test, this one actually tripped me up a little bit because I missed one little word. So I know the answer to this one very well because I had to read back through. Um, but for these where you ever feel stuck, this is where you want to build up time by getting really fast on the grammar questions because some of these you really need to nitpick away. The writer wants an effective conclusion that re reinforces a main idea of the passage. Which choice best accomplishes this goal? While advice columns such as strays may differ from the columns of 50 years ago, this was what I read a little too fast on test day and I missed this word. And I was a little bit stuck between A and I believe C is going to be our correct answer here if my memory is right from a few weeks ago. But if they do not differ, we're talking about how they're really much the same as those. But I missed that keyword until I went back and read carefully. I was a little bit stuck between those two answer choices. You have to just have to be so detailed as you're going through because everything else looks great in there except for the word differ. B, by posing questions to her dear sugar readers, this is opposite of the passage. They're posing questions to her and she's providing the answers. They're not providing the answers. Dear Sugar's suggests suggests that Dear Sugar's success, that's a little bit of a tongue, tongue twister, suggests that there is indeed a robust readership for well-written advice infused with a sense of intimacy. This is really what we've been talking about throughout it. We saw this intimacy in one of the other questions we just kind of went back through earlier in this passage. Um, we talked about how successful it is with the large readership it has. D, this is another one that just gets way too specific. The book was later adapted into a popular stage play, proving that translating a work into a different medium can result in success. Literally nothing in the passage talks about it becoming a 
play. This is definitely not a main idea of the passage here, nor does this prove that translating a work into a different medium can result in success. That's how we can see that C is our correct answer. All right, onto the fourth passage here. So I remember this was a little bit of a tricky question involving quite a few grammar rules we have to understand. Now, since we see periods, semicolons, first thing I'm always checking is sentence structure. And if you're not familiar with the independent dependent clauses, definitely check out the free trial in those first chapters because they'll really help you improve on these. But for 34 here, until recently, scientists thought that the Przolski's horse, an endangered species living in Central Asia, Central Asia was the only remaining truly wild horse species. Independent clause. A wild species being one whose ancestors were never domesticated by humans. So being is generally speaking a big no-no. We're missing an active verb in this sentence. We said like a wild species is one whose ancestors were never domesticated by humans. We'd have an independent clause, but we do not have another independent clause, so we can eliminate that. Now with C, a wild species is, that would give us an independent clause, but we cannot join two independent clauses with just a comma, which would create extra information. We can't use that with our semicolon. B is one of our nice advanced dash rules. This single dash functions the exact same as a colon. We're giving explanation, definition, clarification. That's why B is correct. Here's an out of order question, so we'll come back to this later. Um, but I'm going to be skimming through as I go through. Um, all right, 35, we get logical placement. So for these, I always slow down my read a little bit because I really want to start picking up the relationship of the sentences. Gonnet's team began sequencing the genomes of prehistoric horses. These horses' bones, so I don't, these two sentences are fitting together perfectly. Um, bones and teeth had been collected during excavations of Central Asian prehistoric sites belonging to Bowtie culture, which bred some of the first domesticated horses more than 5,000 years ago. The researchers also sequenced the genomes of Eurasian horses for more recent periods. They then compared this new genetic information, so this new genetic information is referring back to the more recent ones, to previously sequenced genomes of ancient and modern horses. Based on these comparisons, so referring back to what we just saw in this sentence, the scientists built a family tree to blank different horse populations are related. So as I'm reading through this, I think they're all in proper order, but we'll see when we get to 37. This is a wordiness and redundancy question. Determine how they're all saying the exact same thing. Ascertain and determine are the same thing. Figure out this is all just super, super wordy here. So sentence four, yes, yeah, sentence four. So the researchers also sequenced the genomes of Eurasian horses from more recent periods. They then compared this new genetic that we already noticed to previously sequenced genomes of ancient and modern horses. Based on these comparisons, we always really want to think about these kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Once you look for these little connectors, these questions turn from feeling a little iffy to more black and white. Some of them can be way more difficult than that one there. When Gonitz and her colleagues analyze the family tree data, they blank. Oh, introduces discussion in the paragraph. So I'm going to read this before answering that. Previously, researchers considered ancient Przolski horses, I'm probably mispronouncing that, to be the ancestors of bowtie horses. Ancient Przolski horses were considered by extension, so, right, this is starting to become a bit redundant and were considered, is a little bit wordy here, by extension to be the ancestors of all modern domesticated horses as well. So, get rid of that one, it has a semicolon, now we can look at the other ones. So we'll look at A, um, bowtie horses, not only of those horses, but also by of extension, really, really wordy. Um, we're also starting to change the meaning of the sentence with the not only in, but also. C looks like it should be correct. Bowtie horses and by extension, all modern domesticated. Same exact idea. We're keeping all of really basically the same structure. We've just condensed this down to be the ancestor. This is just way wordier than what we're saying there in C. Um, D, horses and all modern domesticated horses as well. Because the consideration was extended, really unnecessarily wordy. C is going to be our correct answer there. Um, oh, all right. This was the one the College Board still hasn't released, so we can't answer question 40, sadly, until they post that online. Um, which choice most effectively introduces the discussion? Well, it's going to be A here because we're saying previously they thought they were the ancestors, but we're finding this new information out. So that's why A is our correct answer there. Um, 41, modern Przolski horses thus appear to be a feral population, one descended from escaped domesticated animals. So 
This test was really, really heavy on colons and dashes. So modern Przolski horses thus appear to be a feral population. Independent clause. One descended from escaped domesticated animals. So we're once again getting another explanation, definition, clarification. So this is why we're going to have to use the colon here. This would also be correct if not for the inappropriate colon at the end. One descended from, this does not work here. We don't have an independent clause before the colon. They're just popping in that extra piece of punctuation, but we could have a single dash without this colon at the end. Uh, 42 simply looks to be a punctuation question here. Just as startling, the data also showed that bowtie horses, which we know which phrases are always extra information unless we see a preposition before it, like on which, of which, by which. So I'd love to see two commas here. Just as startling, the data also showed that the bowtie horses are not the primary ancestors of modern domesticated horses. Here are two commas. You could do two dashes or two parentheses. That's why they put this extra comma in here. Can't just do one single dash. That's why C is our correct answer there. All right, 43. These conclusions amount to a major, this is just an idiomatic question. We would say shift in the understanding of something. Um, another subject verb agreement question. This test was super heavy on these. Really, really important to be able to spot these. I already know that this is the right answer just based off the pattern and the answer choices here. Um, wild or feral, Przolski horses, that's plural, so we have to say remain. But let me skim through this before we go back to that first question. All right. All right. Establishes the main topic of the passage. Um, the main topic is definitely not that this was published in a recent scientific journal um, or that it's conducted by that not into ancient cultures. We're talking about the horses. That's why D has to be our correct answer. So I really hope this helped you out. This test was pretty standard one. We saw a good bit of the difficult grammar stuff, but not a lot of the really crazy stuff. Um, if you're looking to learn all the grammar rules really in depth, I strongly check out, recommend checking out at bare minimum, the free trial of my ultimate SAT course. You'll learn your sentence structure, a lot of the comma rules. If you're looking to score really highly, you need to understand every single grammar rule. You need to be able to spot the misplaced modifiers, understand how these dashes and colons are working, understand all those situations and work through a lot of practice questions. So if you're really trying to push your English and reading score up, your writing language and reading score, excuse me, up really, really high, you need to be prepared for everything you can see on test day. And that course with over 500 questions and hours of lectures and hours of individual video explanations for each of the practice questions really will get you fully prepared.